Hey. Welcome, everyone. I made this knife with the core of some aircraft carrier arresting cable, but I don't like it. So we're going to quickly see what I did, talk about it, and then move on to two other knives. The cable comes pretty junky, so it goes into some kerosene for a soak, and then I'm going to put it in the forge for burning off any sludge that's left. Okay, I had to weld it to keep it together because the sludge was the only thing doing that. Then I've cut it in half, and I'm going to weld one half to the end of our canister to keep it in the center of the canister because that's going to be sort of important for our pattern. Then we'll put some powdered steel in here, weld everything up, and get it into the forge. So our resulting billet looks pretty good. I'm going to cut it up into four pieces and do a four-way weld on this. Now that billet is cut into pieces and it's going to be stacked up to tile weld those together so we get that repeating pattern that you saw. Now it's time for the secret sauce. I'm putting 15 in 20 uh, edge steel on one side and then the other side is going to be a little thin sliver of mild steel to help keep things together while it's being drawn out. So here it is roughly finished and the pattern is just more distorted than I would have liked. The four-way welds also look a little bit dirty. From my experience, sometimes putting flux on powdered canister steel has this pockmarking effect. And because it's just porous, despite being forge welded and pressing that powder together, I quit relying on powdered steel as an edge material for knives uh, years ago for this reason. Let's take a mulligan. For these two knives, we're going to go back to the exterior of the arresting cable and start from scratch. I've got a new idea. I'm hoping we can manipulate the pattern to get it a little more pronounced. I've got some ideas on that. We'll talk about it in just a second. But first, got to get these cleaned up. So they're going into some kerosene, and then we're going to take a toothbrush to them. And then they'll go to the forge and that'll burn everything else off. Now, speaking of going to the forge, the plan is this. We're going to take the individual strands, straighten them out, twist them up to make them tighter. And yeah, they'll get a little bit shorter. And then we're going to pack those into a canister and see if we can really just get everything nice and tight and close together so there's a lot of differential etching. Oh yeah, we're going to put them in some vinegar so that they get a little bit of iron oxide on the outside. That should help them stand out in a canister too. We've done this trick with iron oxide before. Remember the iron oxide is going to etch very bright compared to the darker, higher carbon steel around it. So a quick and dirty etch makes this look a little bit denser. I'm, I'm hoping that this is a good sign. Just like the last knife, I'm welding 15 and 20 to one side for the edge material and a thin strip of mild steel to the other side to help keep that powdered steel from splitting and getting these tiny cracks when you draw it out. You have to grind those out and you end up losing some material. It's annoying. So I'm working really hard here to get an interesting pattern. I'm going to add a ladder to this billet, and that should give us some in and out depth, maybe. I'm hoping. I don't know. I've never done this before. We'll see. Fingers crossed.
Here's a quick and dirty edge. You can see our edge material along the bottom. That's great. And the top has got a little thin strip of mild steel. We'll grind that out. No sweat. Time for a little more ladder to get a little more pattern and draw out the billet. Now I've had some extra material I cut off. We'll use for our second knife that I'll show you at the end. The customer wanted a full tang knife and probably that's not my preference when you, you know, bother to make this uh, Damascus, you want to show it all off instead of putting it under the hood of some scales, but that was his desire. So that's what we're doing for him. I've thermally cycled the blade prior to quenching it in this Parks 50 oil. We're going to follow that by some temper cycles at 365 degrees Fahrenheit to 15 and 20. I get tempers at a relatively low temperature to, to, the, to the 60 HRC range, which is uh, a lower tempered temperature than 1080 to 95 or about anything else I use, to be honest. The customer wanted bog oak scales for the full tang knife, and I didn't have any bog oak scales. I did have a block, which I didn't want to cut up for a full tang knife. So I just went ahead and made a hidden tang from the rest of the billet and I put the bog oak block on that. I'll show you that knife at the end. It's the same material. It looks pretty good. You'll see. So I'm sanding this to a thousand grit, which is sort of where I've been for most of my Damascus at this point. And it's the end of the ferric chloride for an etch. This stuff etches pretty slow. So I, I just applied sort of a more subtle etch to both these knives. Keep in mind the Bago candle on the second knife I'm going to show you does have true oil as a finish. I've been using more true oil recently. What do you guys think about that stuff? I've, I didn't really appreciate it at first, but now I sort of like it. You guys have a good one.